Hey guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Friday, May 29th, 2020. And yesterday I made a YouTube video discussing Joe Biden's potential pathways to the presidency in 2020. And now today I'm going to be discussing Donald Trump's pathways to re-election, taking a look at the 2016 electoral map and pretty much uh, putting some states up for a uh, toss up and going forward from there. So on your screen right now, I have 98 total toss up electoral votes. And whenever I do these type of scenarios, they are not, um, well, I said this yesterday, they're not mutually exclusive, which means uh, essentially they can all happen all at once. Uh, meaning that if Donald Trump is to win in one scenario, it is possible he does carry a state that I consider blue on this map. All of these scenarios are pretty much just Donald Trump meeting the bare minimum in order to win the election, um, which is obviously more than most times not the case for these presidential candidates usually they're winning then um, more than just barely hitting 270 electoral votes but this just goes through a number of scenarios that are um, sometimes obvious but also uh, mildly unrealistic taking a look at the electorate um, if I was basing this off of 2016 numbers uh, this all could have been possible but uh, as you can see there are some states on here that have since taken way more uh, <laughs> A lot further steps towards the Democratic Party uh, than we've seen uh, in 2016. For the example, uh, in this situation, I would say Virginia, which sure was a swing state in 2016. Tim Kaine being on the ticket definitely should have put that state more in the Democratic column. But since Donald Trump's presidency, um, Virginia definitely has taken a, a very large turn in favor of the Democratic Party. So this map already assumes that Donald Trump carries the swing states of Iowa, Ohio, North Carolina, Georgia, Texas, and Arizona, and Maine's second congressional district, which this might actually might not be a possibility uh, for President Trump. You see, I was discussing um, or trying to figure out whether or not I would consider Arizona to be a toss-up because Joe Biden is the current favorite to win the state. However, it looks like Donald Trump's real pathway to the presidency lies through a victory in the state of Arizona. Now, I will say that uh, Joe Biden is on top right now in uh, Arizona, but it isn't impossible for Donald Trump to win the state back. Um, there's a number of things that can happen uh, with around 150 days till the presidential election. So I will say that Arizona, while being a Democratic state right now, according to my characterization, could very well go to President Trump. And if he is winning in certain states in the Rust Belt, um, it is very possible he is also carrying states in Arizona. Or as you can see, some of these toss up states, if they are going to Donald Trump, he could win the overall um election at that point uh, and even without arizona it is possible for trump to win but uh in this scenario he would have to carry uh pretty much all of the swing states that he carried in 2016 except for uh one two three four so let's talk about the first scenario so the first one's pretty obvious let's say joe biden retains the 232 electoral votes from 2016 and donald trump is able to carry the state of florida i will discuss florida in a, uh, later on in the video because that also has to do with one scenario but as you can see, uh, Joe Biden is at 232 electoral votes. Donald Trump remains at 260. And pretty much this is uh, three scenarios all in one, but they all boil down to a win in the Rust Belt. For Donald Trump, in order to win the election, he would only need to carry one out of these three states. Right now, Wisconsin seems the likeliest, which puts him exactly at 270 electoral votes and Joe Biden at 268. But this works with Joe Biden carrying Wisconsin and Donald Trump carrying Michigan. And the same thing goes for Pennsylvania. In fact, it'd be even better for President Trump, leaving room for faithless electors, if possible, um, which there were in 2016 on both sides of the uh, political aisle. And taking a look at uh, the Rust Belt states, again, I would say that Wisconsin is probably the likeliest to go to Donald Trump out of all of them. But in this scenario, Joe Biden could very well flip Michigan, could very well flip Pennsylvania, but it'll all be for nothing considering that one of these three states would just have to go to President Trump in order to win the election. So um, keep that in mind when you're looking at the overall electoral map. The next pathway that I'd go ahead and just characterize uh, goes through the state of Virginia. Now, I know Virginia has taken a number of measures to uh, favor the Democratic Party recently, um, not uh, suggesting anything. I'm saying that the entire electorate, the suburban area that used to be Republican, has now become Democratic, whether that's through party switching, uh, which a lot of it is, and, uh, and also influx of rich Democrats in Northern Virginia, I would say that uh, Virginia has become a reliable Democratic state. It's definitely not safe like Maryland or New Jersey or Delaware, but it is lean or likely uh, in 2020. But that doesn't mean it's out of reach for President Trump. 
In 2016, despite Tim Kaine, the senator from Virginia, being at the vice presidential ticket for Hillary Clinton, she won the state by around 5%. And that isn't exactly the worst margin, but Barack Obama did carry the state both times for the first time, I think since 64, uh, Virginia went to a Democrat. So it did flip uh, very astonishingly in 2008 and uh, held in 2012 and 2016. But I would say that the Republican Party might try to uh, make an effort for it, especially if, in this scenario, um, you know, Joe Biden carries the Rust Belt, and he carries New Hampshire, and he carries Nevada, uh, but Trump is able to carry Florida, and that leaves one state to decide it all. What if the Democratic Party focuses too much on the Rust Belt that they forget to hold on to states that are near um, the area that they're focused on? The White House, Virginia, North Carolina, Florida, all states that could go to Donald Trump. Um, while Virginia may not be the most realistic scenario for Donald Trump, it is a very clear pathway to the presidency. It is very likely that all of these states in the southwest region of the United States, um, including Arizona, do go to Joe Biden. So in this, if that happened, Donald Trump would have to reach elsewhere, but he could just, uh, you know, get rid of that with a possible win in the Rust Belt. But um, let's say Donald Trump's able to carry Arizona and these states, Nevada, Colorado, New Mexico, go to Joe Biden. And the Democrats focus all their time on the Rust Belt, but Virginia and some other states are being ignored by uh, the Democratic Party. Again, they really shouldn't uh, give up one state uh, in the hopes of getting a state that they didn't even carry in 2016. So uh, in this scenario, Donald Trump would win the presidency by flipping the state of Virginia uh, and losing the Rust Belt. And I know it's a very unlikely scenario, but it is possible, um, I would say. The American electorate does strange things, as 2016 uh, showed us. And the next pathway would actually be just by flipping uh, two states from the Hillary Clinton column in favor of Donald Trump. So um, again, he would win the state of Florida. Trump would uh, lose the Rust Belt, giving Joe Biden um, victories there. And he would also lose Virginia. But in this scenario, New Hampshire and Nevada go to Donald Trump. So in 2016, it's actually very interesting. Uh, Donald Trump led in polling data on Election Day in Nevada. He led by around a percentage point over Hillary Clinton. He ended up losing it by around 2.3 percent, somewhere around there. Um, that proved the polling data to be wrong. Same thing happened in the 2016 Senate race in Nevada. It expected a Republican victory, ended up going to the Democrats. And the same thing uh, happened, I believe, in 2018 with the Nevada Senate race, uh, the Republicans were ahead for a very long period of time during the campaign season, ended up losing on Election Day. So polls in Nevada typically overestimate Republicans, but you shouldn't underestimate the possibility of a Trump victory here. Hillary Clinton only won by 2% here in 2016 and won by 2,000 votes in the state of New Hampshire in 2016. So when you look at the two states, these were actually the closest Democratic states, I would say. Um, besides Minnesota, these states were the closest ones uh, in the presidential election. And if Donald Trump was to have a possibility of flipping any states from the 2016 column for the Democrats, I would say New Hampshire and Nevada are the easiest ones to flip because the Rust Belt will be locked down by the Democratic Party. They are not going to neglect that area anymore, which means they're going to focus all of their time here. And they may just say, uh, we're not going to focus as much time on the four electoral votes in New Hampshire and the six electoral votes in Nevada when there are, you know, around 50 electoral votes in the Rust Belt alone. So I would say that uh, if Donald Trump was to go through any two states from 2016, it would be New Hampshire and Nevada, which are enough to put him narrowly at 270. So again, when I'm talking about the bare minimum, it is possible for Trump to win the Rust Belt and also carry New Hampshire and Nevada, but it is not super likely. Um, and again, these scenarios, again, are just bare minimum in this situation. For Joe Biden in the state of Florida, let's say he carries Florida. This would be a big victory for him. He carries Virginia. He carries New Hampshire. He carries Nevada. But Trump would effectively sweep the Rust Belt. And that would be enough to put him over the top. So the Rust Belt, while going for Trump in 2016, was closer than Virginia, uh, sorry, than Florida. Uh, Florida has a possibility of going to Joe Biden with around a million new voters added to the voter rolls. And after the federal judge uh, stroke down, uh, uh, striked down the poll tax in uh, the state of Florida for convicted formerly um incarcerated felons. Uh, there's going to be a number of voters in, in Florida, and there's also going to be an increased Latino turnout, whereas the Rust Belt definitely contains a majority white electorate. Um, so does Florida, but there's a much more uh, bigger minority presence in Florida, especially with it growing uh, very quickly. Uh, but the Rust Belt is essentially going to it's actually going to lose power after we hit the 2020 census. But um, the majority white electorate here is going to probably be uh, not easier for Joe Biden to win over, con uh, considering that I uh, sorry, not easier for Donald Trump to keep in his column, considering that uh, they've gone to Obama in the past and uh, they've been much larger margins than the Florida margins in both 2008 and 2012. 
But let's say Joe Biden focuses his attention on the 29 electoral votes in Florida, ends up losing North Carolina, ends up losing Georgia. So it doesn't really pan out the way Joe Biden wants it to. But then Trump goes ahead and sweeps the Rust Belt yet again. And that puts him at 277 electoral votes. So looking at this overall electoral map, while this scenario would be considered unlikely, I would say that... Uh, it is possible that the Biden campaign does purely focus on the South. Let's say they're overconfident in the Rust Belt. Um, that I don't think that's happening right now because the Biden campaign, number one, isn't holding in-person uh, rallies. So it's going to be really difficult to gauge the overall public feel in these states as we proceed through the uh, global pandemic that we're in, especially for this election. But um, Joe Biden uh, could possibly lose the Rust Belt and carry Florida just out of spending more money on this state and focusing way more uh, on in terms of resources. And Trump ends up sweeping the Rust Belt yet again. So um, in this scenario, that would effectively make Trump president for another four year term. So let's go ahead and just reset the map. And that's pretty much it. So those are the actual four scenarios I could see not only but uh, possible or most likely scenarios in which Donald Trump wins the presidency. Some notable states that were not flipped to Minnesota, Colorado, and New Mexico. These are all states I think that are going to take very solid Democratic stances in 2020. And I don't think it's going to end up being um, the easiest election for Donald Trump to win. He will probably win with less electoral votes, joining the likes of Woodrow Wilson and Barack Obama, winning uh, less electoral votes in their if they successfully if he successfully wins his reelection bid um, in 2020. Uh, in terms of winning less electoral votes in their first term uh, bid. But again, things all uh, change very drastically uh, and very quickly on the uh, electoral map. So that's pretty much it. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I will have my full election night out tomorrow. Um, so go ahead and wait for that. It's going to be very, very interesting. Um, again, thank you guys for watching this video. Comment down suggestions below. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you all later today.